Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Money here. How you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing really well and having a really great day. In this video, you guys just saw me unbox eight RTX 2070s and you guys probably saw the video yesterday of me unpackaging them. Thank you again to my mod for selling me these GPUs. For those that are wondering, I got them for about $200 USD each. And yeah, I thought, you know what? I needed to buy eight GPUs in order to fill up this Mindbox 8 server case. You guys can see. And here is the shop, mineshop.eu. If you guys are wondering, this video is brought to you by mineshop.eu. If you guys need any crypto mining hardware or anything like that, they sell server cases, they sell graphic cards, they sell risers, they sell everything. And for those that don't know, mineshop.eu is owned by Guntis Vitolins. He is a crypto mining YouTuber. He is an OG in the crypto mining space for some of you who may not know. Link to his YouTube channel and also link to mineshop.eu down below. So appreciate mineshop.eu and Guntis for sending me this mine box eight okay so i'm really excited to do a review of this and see if it'll work for my eight rtx 2070s here so this is actually one of my first riserless motherboard style like server cases i've ever played with so yeah this apparently is an onda board it has like ddr3 memory pentium celeron processor i'm not sure which one and then it also has like a m sata ssd in there i think it's a 64 gigabyte and as well it's got like 420 mil delta fans in the front here so the main thing about server cases is to basically have an enclosed area so that the airflow can cool the gpus a lot better and then all the like the forced air is being forced out on this direction here so really good for like data center my you know those kind of things comparing it to like you know open airframes it's a little bit different but if you're a residential miner you know these are fine but if you're a commercial miner then these will probably make sense for you but anyways let's get going here I want to try out this Mindbox 8 by itself first so I do have the HDMI I have the power which is 240 by the way and I got Ethernet and a USB which is a keyboard so we're gonna go into the BIOS and also just see you know what's preloaded on this thing oh yeah disclaimer the Mindbox Box 8 only works on 180 to 250 volt okay so you gotta have 240 volt at home if you are in North America but I believe in EU you guys already have 240 or 250 volt already so you guys don't have to worry about that okay I got all the cables plugged in first time turn on let's see oh yeah looks like it turned on already I didn't have to press the power button or anything okay all the Delta fans are <laughs> pumping out a lot of air Motherboard light is on and I think something is coming up on the screen here. Let's just see what comes up. Actually, I want to go into the BIOS and oh, nope, it looks like it's loading up HiveOS and yeah, it looks like it says here I need to put in my rig and stuff. So, you know what? I'm going to give this a restart. Pressing delete. This thing is so cool. It's actually really loud because of the Delta fans. Okay, so I'm in the BIOS and yeah, it looks pretty standard by the looks of it. I just want to see if this has like 4G decoding, you know, similar to all those other motherboards out there. Oh yeah, so there we go. This one has the above 8 MMIO BIOS assignment. So it looks like that's already enabled. And uh, you know what? I don't think I really have to change anything. Actually, this looks like the PCIe Express. Yeah, so here we go. Do I need to do Gen 1 or Gen 2? You know what? But I'm going to trust Mineshop.eu. I don't think I need to change anything as uh, they must have already pre-configured all the settings in the BIOS here. So we're going to go back into Hive OS. So that's pretty handy. It's already going into Hive OS. So I'm assuming the reasons why they do that is so that people you know they don't need to install or get an installer for hive os onto the m sata there so that's that's really cool of them to do that preloaded hive os i have to add a new rig in hive os here so i'm gonna do that and then i just want to see if hive os can see uh, just this rig alone without any gpus and then once that's done then we're gonna populate this whole thing with eight rtx 2070s and uh, see if it works good all right so give me one sec putting in the rig id Okay, Hive OS can see the rig here. Perfect, there's no GPUs added yet, but you guys can see it has a Celeron 3865U processor and it's got a 64 gig SSD here. And yeah, everything else looks standard. I think it has four gigs of RAM as well. Let me go ahead, I'm gonna turn this off. Actually, is there a power button on this thing? Yes, there is, right in the front here. So I'm just gonna press it once. And yeah, Hive OS shut it down, okay. Perfect, now guys, we are gonna add RTX 2070s. So I wanna see the power cable situation here. 
And uh, one of the things I was kind of worried about is, you know, how many PCIe's there are. So here's one strand of two 8-pins, okay? Here is another strand of another 8-pin. Uh, here is another strand, so we got three strands, and here is another one. This is a fourth strand I can see here, and then now we have a fifth strand. So total, by the looks of it, it, I don't see any other extra ones here. It looks like the rest of them go into the riserless motherboard. So there's five strands here, so I have 10 PCIe ports, basically. And so we need, I guess for each RTX 2070, there is an 8 pin, a single 8 pin, so that's good. But there is one thing I'm kind of worried about, and you guys probably know with, uh, you know, splittered uh, PCIe cables that go into power supplies, that if it is enough to handle two RTX 2070s. So we do know that a single 8 pin can go up to, I believe, 150 watts, maybe max 200 watts. So if the TDP on an RTX 2070, which I believe is 150 or 180, technically this should be okay, okay? This technically should be okay. This is a 2000 watt server power supply, like a mining power supply, and you can only run it at 240. I'm gonna say, since we are gonna run this on low power capacity, you know, this single strand here should be able to run 300 watts, maybe more, just a little bit more on a single strand here. I guess I'm gonna be using four strands instead of the five because I can only plug one eight pin into the GPU. So I'm gonna populate it and then I'm gonna put in my uh, flight sheet in Hive OS and get the overclocks in and make sure it's undervolted before I turn it on so it doesn't use full power, which I'm sure it can handle it, but you know, I, I don't wanna risk that. But anyways, let me go populate all the 2070s into here. Just give me one sec. Okay, I haven't put in the power cables yet because I just want to show you guys something pretty funny. So you guys can see how uniform it is. You know, all the eight pins are in a line here, but then we get to this RTX 2070 and it is not in line with the other ones here. So there is something different about this RTX 2070. I did take it back out just to make sure that it was an RTX 2070, and it is. So I don't know why MSI maybe possibly has a different revision of the RTX 2070. I found that to be pretty funny. So yeah, I'm just gonna put in the power cables now. Give me one sec. All right, you guys can see I have all the PCIe cables into each of the RTX 2070s and you guys can see I actually utilized all the PCIe that I could and I, I did have one extra strand so I did use that for one of the RTX 2070s by itself and then I did have another strand I can use by itself as well. So two of them are using uh, two single strands and then the other three strands I told you guys before I had five PCIe strands so the other three I have uh, branching off for two each, okay? Hopefully that makes sense because I guess there's just not enough PCIe and I guess most of them went into the riserless motherboard for the PCIe in the bottom there. So that's understandable. I'm guessing most of the power is gonna be drawn from the PCIe on this uh, riserless motherboard anyway. Okay guys, let's hope for the best. First time turn on, I hope nothing goes on fire. Here we go, three, two, one. Okay. All right, let me just see all the fans are moving. Yeah, it looks like all the fans are on. Okay. All right, let's see if it boots up into Hive OS here. Yes, it's loading. Okay, let's just see if it shows the RTX 2070s. Okay, it says it's loading the drivers. That's good, that's a good sign. And uh, let's see, okay, it's still going, still going. And okay, oh. Oh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, it's showing the cards there. Let's go into my Hive OS here. I just want to see if it shows up uh, in here. And yes, yeah, we're good. I think it looks good. Uh, eight RTX 2070s. Okay, I haven't done any of my overclocks. I don't have a flight sheet or anything. So uh, let me set that all up. Give me one sec. Okay, so I'm giving it a moderate overclock on the memory of about 1100. I think that's uh, medium, and then I put power limit at 125 watts. Should technically be good. Okay, I'm gonna hit save here and add the flight sheet. Okay, flight sheet is added, and it is booting right now to mining in Phoenix Miner, 
and uh, we're mining on ethermine.org we're gonna see what this does on ethereum first obviously because that seems like the most profitable thing at the moment as of making this video and I guess everyone wants to see the ethereum hash rate on this RTX 2070 rig so let's go let's see what it shows and I'll show you guys the power consumption on the PDU in the second here okay yeah looks like we're ramping up here so right now it looks like we're showing 40.4 mega hash on each of the RTX 2070s. So that looks pretty good. And then the power consumption, it says 988 watts in the software. So it looks like we're finding some shares already. And uh, okay, that looks pretty good. I wanna go see what it's like at the wall, uh, well, on the uh, Triplight PDU. So I actually had to turn off my uh, 12 by P104 rig. Well, now it's the 10 by P104 now. And then I had to turn off my A10 Pro. But yeah, it looks like we are utilizing five amps. So what is five times 240? Five times 240 watts. So that would be about 14, 13, 1400 watts or so. That's that's a bit more than I like. Okay, so five amps. Yeah, if I did the math correctly there, five times 240, a thousand, no, no, 1200 watts, thir like 1250 or so. Man, my math is terrible. Okay, yeah, so I think that's, yeah, not too bad. I wanna see if I can uh, up the hash rate here. I know that we can. I'm gonna try boosting the memory on these. Give me one sec. Okay, so I had an issue. I couldn't go any uh, lower on the power limit. So I tried 120, but then I was getting this NVIDIA OC failed. So it looks like I can't go anything lower than 125 watts. And uh, But I was able to bump up the memory up to 1600, uh, but now we're getting about 42 mega hash. So yeah, looking at the Phoenix Miner here, yeah, we're getting 42 mega hash across all the cards. And it uh, looks like we're finding shares just fine. Go see the power consumption just to see if it's still at five uh, amps, which is basically 1200 watts. And no, it's showing four amps now. Okay, well that's, that's pretty cool, four amps. So that says uh, four times 240 equals uh, pretty much a thousand watts uh, at the wall there. So that's pretty good, pretty good. Okay, well, guys, I think that's it. I will want to maybe try other algorithms on this rig in another video. Please let me know what other coins you guys want me to try, like maybe Ravencoin, maybe Swap, or Zcoin, or anything like that. Maybe I can try that. But anyways, guys, it looks like this is working pretty good. This uh, Mineshop.eu, the Minebox 8 server case, seems to be pretty legit. And right away, it worked. Everything worked right out of the box. I'll show you guys the back here. I can, I can definitely feel a bit of heat, but definitely a lot of airflow as all the air is being forced inducted this way. So I guess once I put on the lid, then I should be able to theoretically get better uh, temperatures, even though I'm probably getting really good temperatures already. Let's just look at the temperatures here. 47, 51 Celsius, 51, 50, 53, 49, 49, and 50 degrees. Yeah, no, the temperature is already really good in this server case. Everyone says server cases are amazing for mining because, you know, they're able to cool the cards in an enclosed area a lot better. Okay guys, well, thank you for watching. Please let me know what you think about this Mindbox 8 and uh, the RTX 2070s that I have in here. And let me know if there's some coins that you guys want me to try. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and peace out. I'll fix it later.